Hey friends, Shay here. So today we are here to wrap up the first little over a week of 30 and 30. So if you're unaware, I'm shooting for 90 and 30 <laughs> because I'm crazy, but I've made significant progress. I have already read 27 volumes in the first eight days of April. So let's go ahead and kind of wrap that up and talk about them. So I've got them all in a stack behind me. So we're just gonna go through the list because everything's been physical. So first things first, I did catch up on mint chocolate. I read volume eight, volume nine, and volume 10. So with this series, we are dealing with two step siblings who become step siblings in their high school years, but they were attracted to each other before they became step siblings. So they are in a relationship. Volume 10 had us kind of finally facing the parents about the situation. So I'm really excited for the next installment in the series. Half of the time when I'm reading this, I forget their step siblings until they have to like go home. And it's like, oh yeah, they're step siblings. But in this, it's not icky or weird or fetishy, which I appreciate. They're just two teens who really liked each other and their parents happened to get married. Um, I really enjoy the series. I felt like these three volumes gave a solid plot progression and character progression for both of our characters. So I ended up really enjoying catching up with this one. I'm really excited. I feel like I'm going to save up a couple of volumes at a time and kind of go that route with it because that tends to work really well for me. So um, I'll probably continue to pick them up, but I won't... I'm going to read them in stints of like three or four at a time. I have this gut feeling it's going to end by the volume like 13 or 14. We're really close to catching up with Japan, so it might be a while. But I do really enjoy the series when I pick it up. So definitely excited about more mint chocolate. The next one I have here is actually the first volume that I read for 30 and 30 or 90 and 30 as I'm doing. And that is We Can't Do Just Plain Love Volume 2. So I really loved the first volume. The second volume definitely continued along a similar trajectory and I really enjoyed the direction it was headed. So I continue to really enjoy this one. This is definitely 18 plus explicit. So even though they don't come sealed, when you'll find them on a shelf not sealed. So if you're mildly interested, you can always try to read them at a bookstore or maybe check it out from a library, but do know that it is explicit going in. I mean, this cover should give you a pretty good indication of that, but just want to make sure it's very clear for everybody. But again, I really like the dynamic where she likes his scent. He's getting comfortable with women through their interactions and they like go on a date in this one and it's really cute. I really just enjoy it. It's it's sweat and soap and ladies on top having a baby. Like that's what this is and I love it so much. So with that said, I definitely recommend the series if you like the smutty mangas. If not, go ahead and pass on this one. The next volume I've got here to talk to you about is Kakirio Bed and Breakfast for Spirits Volume 9. This is the most recent installment in the series. We're basically current with Japan, so it's a long time in between volumes for this one, and they are fairly short. So if you want to save some of these up, I get it. I do believe this is in the Viz Manga app if you wanted to read it that way as well. In this one, we continue to follow the adventures of the restaurant at the bed and breakfast. We meet some interesting characters and there's some interesting reveals with them. And we have a problem with one of our favorites for a moment, but it does get resolved fairly quickly. And it's just interesting all around. The husband-to-be is not present in this volume, but he returns towards the end. So I'm really interested to see how the next volume is going to go. I don't know how long the series is going to be, but I tend to enjoy each step as we go. The next one I have here is Love's In Sight Volume 4. This is a really cute rom-com. It does read in four coma but it's a smoother read than most four comas for me most four comas for me feel very choppy this one does not um in this one we have a girl who is blind and a hero who looks like a delinquent and i love their dynamic i love the representation we're getting for her being blind and her struggles in getting a job and things like that i think it's handling it all very well it's not making it too easy for anybody involved. Um, the boyfriend is learning about things he needs to be sensitive about along the way. So I think it's a really good learning lesson and teaching tool for teens who can run into this and not know what to do. 
But the love story along the way is super sweet. I really love these two. He is so obsessed with her. It's adorable. She is equally obsessed with him, just in a more subdued way. And I really enjoy them. So I definitely recommend the series. Again, this reads smoother than most Four Coma for me. So I do recommend giving it a try, even if you're not a fan of Four Coma, because I feel like it has bigger I'm not sure where that cut off but I loved Vo Love's Insight volume four and I'm really excited to continue this is only going to be an eight volume series so there's going to be a lot to like it's going to be a short and concise series and I'm really excited about that the next series that I caught up on and completed is Lovesick Ellie so I read the last four volumes so I read volume nine ten eleven and twelve now this one didn't give me quite enough in the very end of it for my liking usually of this kind of a series. It didn't have to be perfectly tied up in a bow by any means, but it just was a little too ambiguous for me. I might do a reread of the entire series straight through and then decide if I'm going to keep it. I haven't decided officially, but I needed a little more from this one. I wanted a little more from this one, especially because... Like, we got so much from it until the very end. So the end was just kind of a letdown. So I'm going to read it all through one more time, I think, and then we'll decide if I'm going to keep it or not. But if you want a vlog of reading the entire series to give my final thoughts, let me know. I can maybe do this as like an on the chopping block situation where I end up reading the whole thing. So maybe we'll do that. Let me know if you want to see that. But all in all, it's not a bad series. It's just... I thought this could potentially be like a new gold standard for a high school shoujo, but it didn't quite land the, it didn't quite stick the ending. So I think I'm going to read it all the way through one more time and then decide. So if you want to see that, let me know. The next catch up that I did was a huge, huge catch up. And that is Toilet Bound Hanako Kun. <laughs> so during Amazing Readathon last year, I read the first nine volumes. So now, I'm now current with the publication. So I read volume 10, volume 11, volume 12, volume 13, volume 14, volume 15, volume 16, volume 17, volume 18, and volume 19. So I really love the direction of this series. Each volume had me thoroughly engaged with it. It was really hard to stop and put these down. I'm very much looking forward to volume 20 when it comes out. This is a series that I'm invested in for the long haul officially now. And I kind of like reading it in little chunks, like three to four volumes at a time. So I'll probably save up the next few and then do a reading chunk kind of a thing, especially because we're basically current with Japan at this point. So they're going to be long times in between. But do know that this series is definitely worth it. It's definitely in my favorite shonens, and this is one that you will be seeing on my channel and hearing me recommend a whole lot more than I have in a long time. I have finished two other series so far during 30 and 30, and so the first one here is The Girl with the Sanpaku Eyes. Now, talk about an ending that sticks to the landing. Like, this series has been nothing but sweet and adorable from the beginning. The ending is just as sweet and adorable as you would want. The way that these two are so into each other is adorable, and you get to see them a little bit in the future, which I really like in these kinds of series sometimes. Um, this one worked really well for me, and I just really love their dynamic. They're so sweet and so cute. And I love that they go the distance and it makes my heart so happy. So if you're looking for a short romance series, The Girl with the Sanpaku Eyes is a fantastic one. And I would highly recommend checking this one out if you haven't. This is one that's definitely going to be staying in my collection for the foreseeable future because I am very, very happy with how this ended. Another one that is forever and always staying in my collection is I Think Our Son is Gay. Now, in this volume, we finally have the mom facing some of the tough things that she hasn't been willing to face up to this point. I feel like this approach at looking how your child might be different from how society thinks they should be is done very well. When 
she finally talks to her husband about kind of the insensitive things he's been saying in front of his son who could potentially be gay. I really like how that went down from from her approach to it and his reaction to it. I think it was done in a really great way because sometimes you don't realize you're being insensitive. And then once you figure it out, you're immediately like remorseful and trying to make it better. And the dad really does his best to kind of do that. And I really love how all of this plays out. And I love that there's not this big like coming out confession to the parents thing in this series because I don't think that's necessary. That's not what this series is about. This is about a parent noticing and supporting and loving their kid before they're ready to tell them. And that's how all parents should be. The, this mom is a model of how all parents should approach any child who might be different, whether that's their sexual orientation or anything else about them. We do get a reveal about the brother that I thought was really cool in this volume. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to spoil it, but the series is five volumes. I think it's just the right length, honestly. Yes, I could have continued to read about this for a long time, but I think this length worked perfectly for the kind of series that it is. So I do highly recommend checking this one out. Again, it's five volumes. If your library doesn't have it, order it into your library system. If you want to sit in the bookstore and read it because they have all five volumes, do it. This is one that you should be reading I think it's worth paying for and investing. This is one I will revisit because when my friends come to me and say, I don't know how to react to the fact that my kid might be gay or lesbian or pan or different, I'm going to hand them this series and say, this mother is an amazing role model. You should definitely model how you look at and talk to your child after this because I think it's done brilliantly. And she learns along the way too. She's not perfect all the time. She gets better as it goes and that's just how parenting works. It's all kind of hit or miss until you get a role model in your life and you can kind of model something after it. So this is definitely something I will keep in my library to loan out to anybody who wants to read it because this is absolutely something that should be read. And then the last series that I've got to talk to you about for this is Bride of the Water God. So I read the first four volumes of this Korean series. This is all around the lore of a bride being sacrificed to the water god to bring back um, rain to the land. And the way this all plays out has that wonderful k-drama messy feeling to it while also being paranormal and about gods their secrets there's so much going on here i'm gonna let you know i have ordered the next three volumes and when they come in they will most likely be read during this 90 and 30 so i will be continuing this immediately um, I'm just buying them in small stints so I don't feel like I'm going broke tomorrow. So I am very excited about this series. This series is brilliant. I think it's so well done. I, If you can get your hands on this, uh, fantastic, please do. Um, this is one that used to be released by Dark Horse. Um, so it's hard to find these days. I ended up finding these at McKay's in Nashville. Um, the first time I went out to visit Izzy and I finally got around to reading them and I don't regret it. I was able to find the other three on Amazon used. I don't know what condition they're going to come in. I just want to be able to read it and I am very excited to continue this. So if you have a chance to try this series, I highly recommend you do. If you like um, The Water Dragon's Bride by Ray Toma, this is like the K-drama messier version of that. And I am madly in love with it so far. I am so excited to continue this one. So I, all the volumes I think have shipped now. So they'll probably be here like this weekend. So I'm very excited. Okay, so those are the volumes that I have read so far for 30 and 30 in April or my 90 and 30 that I'm trying to do. I will be doing some travel. You'll see that in another vlog coming up here soon. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep reading. I'm very, very excited. I hope y'all are enjoying your reads so far. The next video you're going to see, I'm pretty sure, is my manga log and haul for March because I haven't filmed that yet. And I think that's the next thing I'm going to film. So once that's done, I will see y'all later. Bye.